All right. We will spend some more time talking about the previous goals, and then towards the end of this panel, uh, we will reveal the new ones. Um, so one of the things that was really surprising to me when it started was that two of our three goals were um, suggested by very new people, people who hadn't done a lot of uh, things in our community before, um, but who brought so much energy and drive and new ideas uh, into this. Do we maybe want to talk a bit about that? How about you, Neofitus? Do you want to start as one of those people? <laughs> So yeah, for me, as I mentioned last year, it was an amazing experience, like coming to KD, I was around, I think, like two to three months, maybe six, I don't know. But it was very early for me. I joined via the promo team. And first of all, being able to feel that it's like it's okay for me to uh, suggest a goal to the community was a major factor for me getting more involved. I, feel, I felt welcomed, I felt like the people were willing to listen what I had to say as a newcomer, and I urge you guys, if you're uh, newcomers here, to do the same. Don't be afraid to speak out about what you think. And for me, it's been a, an amazing experience. It helped me learn a lot, and hopefully do a lot for KDE through the Goals Initiative. So yeah, I think that's an amazing part of this community, that newcomers can have an impact and have an impact very early on. If I also think that um, it sometimes helps to have an outside perspective. And the goals, I think, is a pathway for outside perspectives to be invited into the KD community and, and bring that to us and for existing contributors to rally around an outside perspective. Sometimes if you're external, you have a better overview on, on what can be wrong with the whole organization. Or not necessarily wrong, but just in potential of improvement, right? Because sometimes we are in the thick of it and we get used to our ways of doing things and then we don't innovate and iterate them any further. But if somebody new comes in who can see this is inefficient, this should be done differently, then the goals offer them a way to immediately get sort of cloud and the team behind them and improve those ways. Um, I always think that one of the most beautiful things about the KDE community and one of our greatest successes is that KDE is so multi-generational, where not only do we get successive new generations of contributors involved, we also tend to retain the old ones and have them work side by side, as I think your photo captured like really beautifully. And we've always done that really well with technical maintainership, where, for example, I got into KDE around 2005, um, the initial sort of projects I made my name with were not projects I myself started. I took them over from previous people. And to me, it was really great that that was possible. Like the, the old generation of developer was not so entrenched that a new one couldn't take over. Rather, on the contrary, they encouraged and supported that. And now I think the goals allow us to do that not just on the technical level, but also on a sort of meta level about improving the organization, improving the community. So I think that's been really great. Do you want to add something else? I agree with both, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want this one? Well, I figure out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so looking back, from today to before the goals started, um, what would you have liked to know um, to make your life easier? What would you have done maybe differently uh, to make your life easier? I think, do you want to go first? You go first. Well, at least for me, coming as a newcomer, I had no idea how complex the whole KDE community was and its projects, it's like huge. I, I still don't know many, all of the people, I still don't know many of the projects, I still don't know what the things we are working on are. So I'm still trying to figure out my head around that. So it would be good to have, I don't know how could that be improved, 
The mentoring of people actually helped a lot, like Lydia, Ike, Alej, and other people were very close to me and helped me and supported me through this process. So um, what, uh, what I, I wish I knew at least then, what I would have done differently is probably try and hopefully we can do better this, w this time with a new round of goals is to not be alone in terms of courting in the, the whole process and push it for that. I think having teams formed around the goals and having more people involved on a higher level and trying to push for them will, be, will do wonders to our goals. Because it can get busy, it can get frustrating, it can get like lonely, so having teams working on that will be a big improvement, I think. I think, so my perspective is a little bit external because you know I participated in a goal but I'm not made. But um, I had the feeling that all of the goals had their first sprint relatively late after the election. I want to ask you, do you think it would have helped your goal if the sprint had been sooner in that process to sort of galvanize the team more early on? Would that have helped, do you think? It probably would, at the same time, to me. It gave me some time to try to think of what has been done and what hasn't and what, where we need to put much more effort in. Because, so it, as I mentioned earlier, there were only a couple of major tasks that we didn't manage to close in these two or three years. Uh, but yeah, maybe on the other hand, it will really help to have the sprint hold held earlier, maybe have a second sprint later based on that in order to help with the whole team building, as I mentioned earlier. So yeah, that's a good idea going forward. <laughs> I think, I'm oh, so sorry, Ivan. Um, one thing that just blasted through my mind um, that you couldn't have known at the time because it happened after the election is that in the last year our income situation, as you will hear later in the Financial Working Group report, uh, improved a lot, our annual income quadrupled essentially and we made the decision to give the goals a budget to work with, which wasn't true at the time they got elected. So yeah, I think the next set of goals can start from that safe assumption that they have money to work with, that they can put to good use towards their goal. So yeah. So considering that goals are like normal KD projects, I do agree that uh, we need to have much more sprints than, than we used to. In essence, for the privacy sprint, which was amazing, but it was quite late uh, in the goal game, and people who appeared, we didn't really have a focused goal what we were going to do on the private sprint. Everybody worked on their own privacy project related projects. <coughs> Some even invented that their projects <laughs> were <laughs> privacy related. If we had uh, an early sprint where we could, let's say, agree on some specific focus points, then all the later sprints would be much more, I wouldn't say productive, the sprint was productive, but it would be more tangible to say, okay, we did this for the goal and not because our project needed it. Mm -hmm. Those are all very good points. Um, one, one last um, question from me, and then we can go to some audience questions, was all of you alluded in your talks to still work being left to be done. Um, what's the one thing that's most important still to do for, the, for each of the goals? Well, for me, I think the thing that needs the most work, and it's very important, is the setting up of a development environment story. I mean, I think we can do much better in terms of making it much easier to people. We have the solutions, we need to work on them and make that possible. So hopefully we can continue with that, maybe with another sprint or in the future, work on that and try to have some solution. I would, I would say that for the start. And of course the website, is, those are the major two for me. <laughs> well, I think um, the biggest challenge is to keep the momentum up and keep going. Um, as I mentioned on one of the slides, some of those user pain points are still not fully relieved. There is still uh, work in progress there. Um, that will continue. Um, I think Nate not being here uh, will take the opportunity to say that we need to help Nate scale. Um, he has been fantastic at you know, leading his goal that he submitted and, and looking after it and communicating its progress to the world. 
Um, I think that's a huge overhead on his shoulders, and I think uh, we should take the opportunity now to see why has the goal worked so well um, and formalize some of those processes and, and make sure they're not just on his shoulders. For example, maybe we should resurrect the KD Comet Digest so that Nate doesn't have to blog all the things by himself. That could be one way to go. Uh, so for the privacy goal, the main thing that would be for all of you to spread the word that privacy and security are extremely hard. <laughs> <laughs> From the simplest things to the really, really complex stuff. Uh, one of the things that I just wanted to mention, uh, we obviously are trying to do our best always, but you should ask yourselves who has implemented the cryptography, who has implemented various different things in the projects that you're using. I've seen several projects, I'm not going to mention any names, where I'm, I'm, not, I'm a layman in crypt, crypt, cryptography and I've seen problems. So all the developers should uh, know what they're doing. And if you're doing something as important as cryptography and privacy are, you need to learn a lot of stuff. Thank you. All right, let's go to some audience questions. Do you have questions? No questions. Ah. Uh, so there's one question I have in regards to organization. I think there was, uh, from the beginning, always a point person for every goal, right? So. I don't know in privacy, I think the uh, point person changed at one point or something like that. For the new goals, uh, is it clear that if the point person is not available, how the process will be? I think for it wasn't such a smooth transition in the privacy goal for some time. It wasn't continuing until you took over. So do we know how we would, in the future, how we would act in such a situ situation? I at least don't have the perfect plan yet, um, but it's definitely something we need to figure out. Um, there's a buff I scheduled, I think, for Monday, um, where I think this should be one of the things we talk about. Uh, in essence, as I said, the, the goals should be normal KD projects. In normal KD projects, when the maintainer disappears, nothing happens, somebody takes over. The problem with goals is that we are not, we don't consider them to be a normal project where that thing can happen. In essence, I, I hate the fact that there is a point to person. It should be a mailing list, it's a normal project. If, I don't know, if uh, Peter Peterson is not present, somebody else should reply. So a goal should not be dependent on a single person, ever. Uh, not technically a question, but just the uh, onboarding stuff and all of the goals that made my life as a developer a lot easier. So now when you have some random new person I see or something, they have a question, they want to get involved, there's now something you can point them to, like go on this wiki page, it has all the information you need. And also a little story about a new contributors, getting them involved is very important. So like at some point you get like, we call it German, betrieb splint, like you stop seeing issues or you, you get so used to that, that one thing being broken that you kind of avoid it. And then there's this new person, so they, they said he, it couldn't be done and he didn't know it, so he did it and it worked. So that's very important to like keep the spirit in and get new people involved that just do things. You knew would be could be done this way, but it didn't because you know it's probably not ideal, but then it turns out it is and then you figure out it's amazing. So very important to get new people in. Hi. I think one of the most important things regarding, you know, onboarding and stuff is that when you join a project and you think, how can I contribute? And, you know, most people here will contribute by writing code. But if you contribute by, you know, trying to bring more people in, it has a multiplier effect instead of an additive effect. And, you know, say, for example, you're a busy maintainer of a project, you know, you do it only in your spare time. And you're thinking, I want to do this and this and this. I want these bugs to be fixed. 
you know, one of the ways that you can actually get that done is to get other people to do it. And how can you do it? And obviously, we've all touched upon it, you know, documentation, uh, pointing to people how to build your project, how to run your project, and stuff like that is really important. And I think that's one of the main benefits of the goals that we've seen over the past couple of years. Uh, I don't like being, well, I do like being a pessimist, but <laughs> uh, so your idea is amazing. The problem is that a lot of us are good at writing code and bad at everything related to communicating with other people. So while I completely agree, the best way to do something is by giving it to others, <laughs> uh, sometimes we don't know how. I think it's, I think one of the reasons it's so hard for us is not actually because we're all that bad at communicating. I think people in our community or engineers in general have a hard time quantifying their productivity in other ways than writing code. If you're doing code review, if you're helping somebody out, you don't feel as productive as if you just fix 10 bucks. And I think we can build a social etiquette around realizing that if you are doing those kinds of things, you are also being productive and, and reward that. Because I do agree with you that one of the most important functions of a project maintainer is to enable the work of others, not just to be the lead coder or just to say no to things, but rather make it easier for other people to write code in your project. That's an important part of being a maintainer and we should recognize that and also celebrate that. Uh, one of the ways we do that is at this conference with the Academy Awards. Um, I think we should just have more of that. So to that, I have an open offer to all developers. If you have notes, if you have <coughs> a fabricator spring, anything that you think could possibly make a good blog post, send it to me. I'll make it into a blog post. You can publish it under your name. Don't even have to mention me. I mean, we just need more great blog posts that invite more people in. Have you just invented blogs as a service? <laughs> <laughs> Valerie at KDE.org, and it really is open to any developer. Woo. A, a Google Doc is even easier, but. All right, do you have more things you would like to talk about from your side? All right. Uh huh, <laughs> I thought so. Shall we, shall we move on to the revelatory moment? Go for it. All right. So, as you know, new goals had been proposed and voted on and are now selected. And the three um, new goals that we have are consistency, Wayland, and all about the apps. To go a bit more into those, so consistency. This was about making all our applications, settings, websites, everything our users see more consistent and more harmonious. Um, and you can kind of see it as a continuation of Nate's work and everyone around him. Um, then the Wayland um, goal, is an enabler for a lot of things to come, right? Um, some of the other candidates, for example, will need us to support Wayland before we can really make good progress on them, like the touchscreen um, support, uh, the input methods one, and also um, moving towards more hybrid devices um, and s things like that. So it's, it's really an enabler in keeping up with the technology that is ahead of us. And then last but not least, we had the all about the apps, um, which is really 
over the past year, we've sp um, spent a lot of focus, and we should, um, on promoting plasma and everything around it. But we also have a lot of rock stars in our apps and um, making them more visible, much more easier to get, much more easier to install on Linux, on uh, Windows, on Mac, and so on, um, is something we sh should spend time on, ac um, according to our community. Yeah, so let's get more consistent, shiny apps into the hands of our users. <laughs> Are the people who propose those goals in the room? Yeah, Jonathan, yes. How about you come here and say a few words about your goals? <laughs> this is your moment to shine. <laughs> well, hopefully it's a like, multi-year moment to shine. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> this is how the goal ended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thank you for selecting All About the Apps as one of the goals for the next couple of years. Uh, I'm awfully scared. I have no idea how to do this. We have, we have many fabulous applications. We have many uh, interesting but unworthy applications, like stuff like games that uh, they're not world class, but they're, they're still great. And uh, they deserve to be uh, promoted until recently. We didn't even have a website that listed all our apps with an up-to-date list of applications. Uh, they deserve to be easy for users to get. And uh, we've been pretty slow in embracing modern methods for uh, distributing our software for people to be able to get it directly. And that means new responsibilities, right? That means new... Uh, integration between uh, application developers and, and finishing that last step of getting it out, and but also making sure that it's maintained, secure, reliable, and deprecated, that it, when it becomes unmaintained, we have a way to make it mark it unmaintained, and we don't have that at the moment. It opens new possibilities, like new business models. Krita has been able to hire developers because they've embraced modern ways of people getting software. Uh, but pretty much nothing else has done that, and I think that's a, a real missed opportunity. Um, but I have no idea how to organize this. It, it, I mean, hopefully we can have a buff and, and make a start in discussing it. I think it's because there's a lot of, lot of work to be done and a lot of potential uh, that, we can, that we can grow on. So um, I'm very new to the KDE community. This is my uh, first time in here. So <laughs> I, I will surely need some help to organize. And uh, I, uh, if you have any suggestion or anything, uh, just write it. And uh, we, it really should be a community work. And um, from what you see, uh, uh, from my point of view, I think that uh, the important thing is that uh, w there are for the consistency goal uh, small goals and uh, bigger goals inside it, where the small goals are small, like uh, changing patterns, alignments, uh, or small visual uh, adjustments that are um, yeah, that should be uh, found in the first place. So finding inconsistency should be uh, one the the first thing that the people should do and. You don't even need uh, much technical knowledge to do that, so everybody should be able to do it. And then uh, there's fixing the small goals, and then the consistency goals also was about bigger goals, such as um, using uh, a single panel instead of having both panels and Latidoc. That is an example, e example, but to be consistent from that point of view, which is obviously a uh, way more bigger goals, so it should uh, rely on very experts and uh, a lot of organization. So, <laughs> yeah. Can you guys say your names for those that don't know? I'm Nicola Venerandi, aka Vigero. And I'm Jonathan Riddle. Oh, 
Oh, once again, I'll be substituting for somebody else and <laughs> reap all the glory. No, um, so the third goal was Wayland. Uh, Wayland is uh, next-gen tech. We used to uh, handle input and output, putting things on screen, getting input from input devices. Um, we've been working towards adopting Wayland um, in Plasma and in KDE software and upstream in Qt for that matter for several years at this point. Uh, we've made good progress. We have adventurous users using it. Um, we need a big final push to, to get it over the finish line and make it the best way to use KDE software. Um, I think this goal is a really neat choice because it's a good example of a complementary goal. Um, if we adopt Wayland, if we make it production ready, it will um, bring uh, improvements to privacy. Wayland has a much better security concept than, than the predecessor technologies. Um, it will also help relieve some of the pain points I mentioned in the earlier talk about usability and productivity. Um, Bayland allows us to do multi-screen even better, for example. Um, so in many ways it is also a continuation of previous goals, just with a little bit of a different focus that is sorely needed to get this done. So I'm very happy um, that it got chosen. I look forward to participating in it and, and helping um, drive it forward over the next years. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> and yes, if you want to talk about these goals, about the goals processes and so on, uh, please come to the buff. I think I scheduled it for Monday. Quinn and Wayland buffs all through Wednesday morning. There you go. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. <laughs>